what if we stopped making the new year more than it is and accepted it at face value? A stressful change to the date that takes three to six months to adjust to writing correctly. Hey everyone, how's it going? I'm Kira Wackett. Thanks for joining me for another video as we work to empower and equip you with the confidence and skills to write your own story so that you can live your life on purpose. Today we're talking about the elephant in the room, the dreaded New Year's resolution. The new year is upon us. This is my last video of 2022, which always leads to the pressure of talking about the end of the year and gearing up for the next one. The past few weeks, I've been inundated with emails about how to see 2023 as the opportunity to do more, be better, and live our best life. We start thinking about how the next year is really going to be our time and how we're going to reinvent ourselves to be even better. We're going to change how we eat, sleep, exercise, set boundaries, manage our time. The list goes on. We generate a list of everything we didn't do, all the shoulds and supposed tos that fill our brain, all the ways that we aren't enough yet, and we become motivated by shame and fear to make a change. How do we know? Because your goals start with, I should, I have to, I know I need to. Now don't get me wrong, I'm all about growth and learning. That's my shtick. And goal setting and anchoring our work on progressive changes is a great way to build momentum. But not when it's rooted in shame and the belief that we're not already good enough, but have to chase it or seek it in the coming new year. So can we all agree that the New Year's resolution needs to be canceled? It's based on external motivation and fear-based pressure. And as we know, external motivation doesn't fuel internal change. It can push us, it can act as a catalyst, but meaningful and sustainable change happens from the inside out. And it can't happen without getting really clear on what is leading you to feel stuck in your current beliefs, habits, and patterns. Action without intention is a waste of time, money, and energy. Intention comes from self-reflection, clarity seeking, and a willingness to sit in and face our shame head on, rather than allow it to keep us stuck in the same cycle over and over of setting unrealistic, externally driven goals, failing, and then inundating ourselves with negative self-talk and evaluation. We all know it, even if we want to ignore it. How many New Year's resolutions have you set only to feel like you failed? How many goals have you claimed that were for or about something or someone other than you? Did you meet them? Did you feel fulfilled? Did they work? Did you stop telling yourself that you weren't enough? Let's try something different. Let's shift the focus from outcome to process, from judgment to scare and scarcity to curiosity and opportunity. Let January 1st be the day we get overwhelmed with writing a new date. Let it be another day that gives us an opportunity, but a day that's not better or worse, more pressured or important than any other. Let's open the door to learning without losing ourselves in shame. So how do we do that? Here are nine steps that you can take as you begin this process. First, distinguish between insight and action as it pertains to goal setting and create a life that's meaningful and fulfilling to you. Second, clarify your why or the values and wants that drive your goals. Third, assess your motivation or your willingness and readiness to make a change and set goals that actually focus on who you want to be and where you want to go. Four, practice radical acceptance and let go of everything that is not in your control or your responsibility, especially what other people think, do, or say. Five, learn to tolerate your distress and shift the focus from quick fixes and solutions to process and growth. What if your resolution was about showing up daily for yourself and focusing on learning and evolving without a deadline? Six, stop allowing your shame and the fear of judgment to guide your decisions and lead you to set more unreasonable goals for you given the context and circumstances of your life in a given moment. Seven, shift your thinking from outcome 
to process-oriented living and focus on the next 1% change rather than jumping miles ahead. Eight, begin a daily gratitude practice. And nine, do the work to show up for and take care of yourself by cultivating a practice of self-love and care. Say no, take breaks without thinking you have to earn them, give yourself grace and space to evolve and grow while staying in that relentless pursuit to living the life you want. Now to help you with this work, check the show notes below and you're going to find a resource to help you with each of the nine action items. And if you haven't gotten there already, let me make it very clear. You are worthy of celebration. You are enough. You have the right to grow without telling yourself that who you are now or how you show up is less valuable. The only person that gets to be involved in the goals you set for you is you. So make sure you're the only one you're doing it for. And with that, we're a wrap for today. Be sure to take a minute and share with us in the comments which step is resonating with you and what support you need from us as you make this change. And be sure to like and share this video with anyone else who could use a resolution reset. Wishing you all a fantastic end to 2022. Remember, life is about how we code it. If you want 2023 to be your best year ever, it will be. Stop talking yourself out of greatness and fulfillment. It's yours to grab. So let's go get that pen back together.